Well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're uh, this has been quite a process. I hope that you enjoyed the assessment session. Uh, I found that uh, fascinating to hear the different perspectives on assessment and you know the the thoughts about how we plan and effectively plan and uh, how there's you know thinking about a theory of action and thinking about professional development and thinking about how people use the assessment and and uh, uh, are able to translate that into the classroom. Uh, these are great resources and great talents uh, in the field, and I'm glad that they were able to volunteer their time uh, to be with us and to, to share their insights. And I want to thank Dawn for the, the uh, facilitation as well that was in, uh, in the collaboration with these people to, to uh, call out some of the core themes that I hope uh, you found helpful. And I hope that your discussions afterwards and you were able to attend and meet with individuals and, and go a little bit deeper. Uh, and uh, actually, I, uh, we're going to be doing an evaluation over all of the, of the uh, summit uh, and sending you a, a note to say, uh, please give us feedback. Uh, but we hope that, that the panels and that the presentations and that the uh, Community uh, communities of practice and the, giving you district time was of value. Um, you know, this is, as you've heard throughout the conference, this is uh, long-term work. Uh, it takes planning. It takes uh, thoughtfulness, uh, and it it takes also a, a broad perspective of what it means to implement social emotional learning, and that social emotional learning isn't just uh, implementing a program. It's about providing the kind of professional development that is uh, going to move our districts forward. It's uh, providing the uh, resources and time for teachers to plan. It's uh, looking at uh, how we create environments. Uh, I think that was uh, really uh, something that stood out in the assessment panel is that we need, and uh, as Dawn tried to address at the beginning, that we need to look at not just the students, but at the environment and whether the environment is there to cultivate uh, these uh, skills in students and to have them model those skills and, and uh, exhibit those skills in the, in the context of their classrooms and their schools. And then uh, the outreach, I think some people have talked about the uh, uh, sort of transformative uh, social emotional learning and having students uh, be active. You heard that in the panel this morning. Uh, where uh, the, uh, there's a, a commitment to student voice and agency. So there are a lot of themes and uh, now is the time we've titled this session, Pulling This Together. Uh, and we know that there are very different points in the work that, that the districts attending this uh, summit uh, are in. And, and we want to have this be the, we wanted this to be of greatest use to you. And we really want to share with you uh, the, some of the progress that those districts have made. And uh, 10 of our districts who are participating have volunteered to come forward and share a little bit about their work and, and their targets for the year and the strategies for achieving them. Now, the way we're going to do this, uh, because it's a little bit complicated, you'll see the list of people up on the screen now. Uh, these are the 10 and the 10 districts that are going to be talking with us. Um, I'm going to ask that because we're going to be pulling these 10 people out of the audience, actually, uh, to do this and, and enabling them to share. Uh, I ask you to take a look, close look at where you are in the list. And as we get to you, uh, so that Seth Graham, our, our uh, tech uh, guru on this, can make this as, as simple as possible, uh, if you would just use your raise hand uh, so that he can quickly identify you on the screen and pull you forward to uh, present. So I'm going to introduce Rick Dugan uh, from uh, Collier, it's not Collier City, it's Collier County, uh, one of, it's in Florida. Uh, and uh, Rick has uh, been the SEL lead as well as the uh, uh, working in student services, the executive director of student services. So uh, Rick, if you would raise your hand and we'll uh, pull you out of the group and we'll begin to look at what were the targets that you thought were gonna be uh, key for this year 
and what's your strategy for uh, um, pursuing those targets? So we have, may have a little pause as, as we bring Rick forward. Am I? There you are. Okay. All right. <laughs> good seeing you, Rick. Good to so, see you. It's, uh, all yours for right Thanks now. Thanks a lot. Um, as I talked about yesterday, um, as we start to roll out our two-week advisory, um, Connect for Success, the first target that we'll be looking at is the fidelity of implementation. So as we're monitoring, we'll, we'll be looking to identify teachers early on uh, and have them work within their professional learning communities to assist uh, other teachers that are not as comfortable uh, with, it, with the content. So really looking at teacher leaders and empowering them in the small groups. And I think you and I have discussed that a little bit as far as the training modalities and giving them some specific times that they can do that. Um, we'll be doing the same thing a lot with our school leaders uh, who show their greatest investment, uh, knowledge base, uh, shared vision of our social emotional learning priorities and have them share with their peers as well at our principal meetings and different breakout sessions. So one thing also that we learn from our seniors uh, and we do uh, like a round table discussion, which um, we did virtually last year was that they really believed and I think we heard that throughout um, the conference was that they needed more time to discuss uh, around the SEL topics. And we've seen that in our growth over the last five years. So we're gonna be looking to uh, empower students to make recommendations and hear their voice, implement their ideas. And then really, I think what we're hoping for is in the second semester to really, you know, the, the advisory is, is a fantastic start, but the idea would be that we would start to implement um, across the curriculum in different activities and start embedding that in opening lessons or, or closing lessons um, across the curriculum and outside of the advisory. Uh, and then uh, lastly, I'll just touch on, I think a lot of folks talked about the emotional wellness of our staff. Um, we've done some previous heavy lifts around trauma-informed care and the impact of chronic stress on teachers but I think there's, there's more that we can do that um, beyond employee assistance, beyond, uh, as uh, one of uh, our folks in the cohort said, beyond uh, breathing exercises. So I think there's more that get, can be done in this area. And, you know, really what we're looking for, I guess, overall as a key indicator would be, you know, in our panorama data, that hopefully we would start to see that sense of belonging among students start to rise. And I'll close with that. Well, Rick, uh, thank you. And um, stay here for a second. I want to ask you just a, a couple of questions um, just to follow up. Uh, you know, one of the things you, you did do is you, you've, uh, and maybe others may not know, is you've launched a program, the Connect for Success, which is your advisory program. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I thought that was a, a, a great way of framing the work for people. Uh, and uh, as you uh, look for uh, the, the coming year, um, you, that's the context in which you're talking about advisories, just to give that a uh, little bit more uh, of a frame of reference for people. But um, as you reflect back on the last two days, uh, what, is there something that stood out that influenced your plan and that uh, you thought uh, it was a, a learning that you could share? Well, like I, like I, I think I said, you know, I talked a little bit about the teachers and in several of the breakout sessions, I think that that was something that, that came across to me was um, making understand that, make, making sure we understand that we know where they are to, in starting this, this process and not taking it, uh, you know, it, for advantage that, because they're teachers that they always necessarily um, have the same belief systems or thoughts that we have because I, as we talked about some of these polarizing issues, I think that's part of it. And so, you know, I heard a lot about, um, you know, the equity wheel 
um, and um, talking about what things are versus what they aren't um, and uh, identifying our terms and uh, defining them in such a way that we can dispel some of the myths um, and misperceptions that some of our teachers and even counselors may have. Well, thank you, Rick. And uh, we really appreciate the, the work that you're doing and the work your team is doing. Um, the next person up is Megan Kempner from uh, Huntington Beach. Uh, Megan, we're looking forward to hearing you know, the, the work that Huntington Beach is going to be. I know that you're at a beginning point, but it's, uh, it's going to be exciting to hear what emerged for you. So we'll wait a moment while Megan uh, comes up. As I said, as, as your name is, or just before your name is called, put your, please uh, do your raise hand so that people can, uh, so that Seth can identify you quickly. Thank you. Are you, are you able to see me? Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, tell us a little about Huntington Beach and, and the directions that, and targets you've set and the strategies you're looking at. Sure, so our overarching goal for our district moving forward is to solidify a cohesive SEL MTSS district-wide model that meets the social and emotional needs of all of our students in support of their academic achievement and well-being. And in order to meet that overarching goal, we've identified two critical targets that we feel are instrumental in our SEL imp implementation for this next year. So the first is to gather buy-in from our stakeholders um, we feel that that's really critical to making this process the best that it can be. Um, and the second is to administer an SEL universal screener district-wide. So in order to accomplish these targets, we plan to start by creating an SEL work group consisting of principals, teachers, psychologists, counselors, and some of our classified staff, our paraeducators, our health clerks, even community liaisons, which we're onboarding for next year. Um, the work group will be part of a broader initiative to shift the climate and culture of our schools to reflect our SEL core values. Um, professional development for staff and purposeful communication to parents will be crucial in this process and um, will help us in administering the universal screeners and using data to meaningfully, to meaningfully guide our practice. Um, and something that resonated with me um, in one of the recent sessions was data literacy of our constitu constituents. Um, I think really getting staff comfortable with data, talking about data, using those data points um, in this process is going to be key. Um, and we're just really excited for where we're headed and appreciate the learning and collaboration opportunities that have been provided during this summit. Well, Megan, that, that's terrific. It's a great start. And I know that uh, uh, Lisa, your superintendent started with we're just at the beginning, but it sounds like you're you really have jumped in, um, and so thank you for uh, that effort. And uh, we look forward to hearing your progress as we move forward. Thank so you. thanks. And uh, the next up is uh, Matt Kressinger, uh, who is in Marshalltown uh, School District in Iowa. Matt, thanks, Shelley. For the year coming, we have some focuses. Um, we're beginning to, um, this past year, we spent time looking at the state's five core competencies and what those look like. They're based on CASEL, just Iowa has rearranged them a little bit. And we spent a lot of time teaching our teachers and our staff members about what those are. So for the coming year, we wanna help people now understand what does that mean in your daily practice and your daily interaction. So that SEL moves beyond a period of time and it just becomes part of the work you do on an ongoing basis with your kids. Um, we also have some other goal areas that we are just trying to enhance, and it really is at that building level. We are looking to enhance the understanding and implementation in a multi-system framework of SEL. Uh, we have a lot of things going, but uh, in the areas, we want to make sure that we're doing them well and just not throwing a lot of things at kids without using data to make decisions on what's the best alignment of their support and need. And one of the other things we continue to work on is that we're a, a supporter of collaborative problem solving in Marshalltown. And we've had a number of our staff members trained in the model, whether it's the tier one or tier two process. And we're at the point where we want to make sure now that we're following the um, approach really well 
and that we're utilizing the tools that come with it. So we have ongoing assessment around those areas. Well, that's great. And uh, Matt, I know that you're uh, uh, also a Castle Fellow uh, as well. So you, not only are you leading the work in, in Marshalltown, but you're uh, digging in deep and in, in collaboration with others around the country. So, uh, you know, congratulations on that. And, and uh, you've got uh, some, some interesting work ahead of you this year. So thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next up is uh, Jane Willard from uh, Naperville. I don't think we can hear you, Jane. Yeah, this is not my first rodeo. You would have thought it was. Um, I apologize. <laughs> you um, to back up a little bit. Start sure, over. <laughs> sure. So um, just like many of you have already talked about that everybody in our system has experienced some sort of acute trauma over the last 15 months, our initial focus this year is going to be on our students and our staff. So um, starting with our staff so our students can um, thrive in a healthy environment with healthy adults in front of them, we will be working to promote positive psychology um, and really looking at the power of moments. Um, we will be in the pro we are in the process actually of um, providing professional learning to our instructional coaches as well as our coaches for special education, building their capacity to support our um, teachers in the buildings through job embedded and also um, uh, presented professional learning at the beginning of the year. We will do the same with our building leaders through our district leadership structure as well. Um, then at the beginning of this school year, we will also provide them with supports on how they can support their students. So we know that we have to re-engage students. Not every student has even been in our doors. Um, so for many of our students coming in in August will be the first time they've been with us um, since March 13th. So um, we need to support them right away. So as a whole system, we're gonna focus on our students um, and our adults. Um, we also know we're kind of SEL 2.0 for us. We implemented our full SEL curriculum three years ago. Um, we also have learned that we, we there's areas for continuous improvement. So we will be reestablishing an SEL steering committee. Um, we're trying to diversify that committee as well. Um, that committee will be responsible for identifying professional learning opportunities for staff and all stakeholders when we're thinking about um, our community, um, our guardians, some of our staff that are only with us, maybe through activities and coaching as well. Um, we will also look to embed equity within SEL. We have written a comprehensive equity plan based on five pillars of success, um, and there's lots of overlap. So we would like to really use, we have curriculum um, focus and we need to bring that equity curriculum um, within our SEL um, framework. And then we hearing today really made us stop and look at and say, do we have success, success criteria and indicators for not only our students, but our adults also? So we have um, success criteria for students, but not necessarily for our adults. So um, lots of the conversations during this um, summit has made us look and say, you know, how do we know we're successful with our own um, staff and parents? Um, one very targeted um, action we need to do is in the area of high school. Um, we have two large high schools. That's probably where we have the least fidelity of implementation with SEL. Um, so we will work with our district lead, our high school leadership to create a multi-year plan um, so that we can increase the opportunities for embedded SEL through the curriculum. And then finally, again, hearing from so many of you, um, we were kind of already on this um, roll, but it is confirmed that we definitely need, need to establish um, a student group to get the student voice to understand um, their um, commitment and, and insight and feedback to SEL, and then how we build those um, sense of belonging and connectedness to the school environment. So it's very ambitious. I'm sure um, if you asked me in June what we've accomplished, it might not be every single one of these, but um, these are the goals. And of course we all um, high performing uh, districts 
are going to get out there and try our best to do those things. Well, Jane, let me ask you, this, first of all, these are a, a broad and a very comprehensive set of goals. Um, and we'll look forward to checking back in uh, throughout the year to see, to see how you're doing. How do you communicate this kind of commitment to the staff and to uh, other administrators in your system? Sure. So um, the way we do that is every year uh, we create a professional learning calendar um, and it has targeted um, areas of, of, of goals for the district. We create those goals with our district leadership team, which is made up of our principals, assistant principals, and uh, district directors, and uh, assistant superintendents and superintendents. And we kind of all come to consensus to say, what is the vision and goal for this year, which is always tied to our strategic plan and the goals of our superintendent. Um, and then what we will do is we will have our uh, district um, administrator kickoff at the beginning of August. And that full day is committed to what um, these outcomes are and how they can be realized within the school context. And our um, building leaders then in August present this to our district or to their buildings and really talk through what is the um, role of the buildings, what is the role of the teacher and what is the role of the district. So all of our professional learning, whether it's through institute days, conferences, um, organic lunch and learns, after school professional learning is directly committed and aligned to our um, areas that we have identified for that school year. Uh, so you really have a very broad commitment and a very, and almost like a, uh, a, a train the trainer kind of model of taking this to down to the, the school level. That, that's great. Um, you know, I, I, I'm also curious, the, uh, uh, after Eric Gordon's comment about student voice, I think that that made a difference uh, in, in your, your comments. Um, I, I think he, he's pretty bold in having 400 advisors. I hope that you may look at a narrower group in the initial, <laughs> initially. <laughs> We will. We'll start small. We normally like to start big, and then we. But we've learned from that, so we will definitely start small and probably just at the high school level level at the beginning, and and hope to grow. So we have learned from lots That's of voices great. this week. That's great. Well, thank you, and thanks for sharing this. And I, I, I want to say that I know Naperville, and and you're going to hear next from Virginia Beach. These are two districts that have been in this work for multiple years uh, and uh, multiple uh, years of commitment uh, that it, it and embedded in the strategic plan of the district. Uh, so uh, for those who are just beginning, you get an insight of where you might be able to take this over the longer term. So Jane, thanks for sharing this and good luck in the work this year. All right, thank you. All right, and let me in, uh, introduce uh, Angela Nichols, who's uh, leading the, the SEL work in uh, Virginia Beach. And just take us, take us through where, where you're headed. Well, I think um, we're very fortunate, as you just mentioned, Dr. Berman, in Virginia Beach, that we have a rich strategic plan that has named social emotional learning as a core priority. So our uh, implementation team has seven key strategies that have emerged from that strategic plan that directly connect to social and emotional learning. I think um, where our growth as, as an implementation team really is in thinking through our, our process. We've done a really, I think, commendable job, the team's so strong at this idea of the plan and the do, you know, identifying who are the key stakeholders, what tactics will we use to leverage and activate those strategies within our framework. And then we have a, a system where we use cross-departmental work teams to develop those resources and supports. We leverage an activation curve. So we're consistently thinking about how do we move folks from awareness to understanding up toward implementation to really embedding it in our culture. I think a place for us to grow is in the, the back end of that plan do study act cycle and being intentional uh, moving into the coming year with identifying those intended outcomes. I think about the, the last session today when they talked about data and just the importance of before we ever gather data, clearly I, identifying and naming how will we use the data, what's the purpose of it. Uh, 
with some support from you, we're going to be shifting to a bit of an agile planning cycle, thinking around, you know, we have large long term goals, but what are some of the smaller steps that we can take that will help to um, to keep us motivated and engaged in the work so that we have the stamina to follow through with this, you know, over the next five years. Well, that's uh, that's that's terrific. Um, the uh, the reflection part is is in, is particularly important, and I I think you you've brought a uh, a, a very large team to the summit, and I know that the uh, I hope that the meetings you've had have been very have been constructive and and helping you uh, support this uh, uh, growth over time. Uh, as you look at it, I know that there's a number of initiatives that you're pursuing uh, for this year as well. Do you want to uh, talk a little bit about the initiatives that you're looking at? Yeah, definitely. So um, I think kind of our key areas, one is just continuing to build that safe and supportive learning environment that centers belonging. So we're going to continue to work with our Responsive Classroom Academy, uh, which is we have teams of teachers across elementary, middle school, and high school that work in a year-long cohort toward bringing in the responsive classroom practices. We engage in peer learning walks and communities of practice with those academies. Another critical initiative is to continue to deepen implementation um, and really integration into our K-12 curriculum. So we're going to be um, hopefully hosting some listening sessions with our teachers and asking those questions of, you know, when SEL feels truly integrated, what will it look like and sound like and feel like in the, in the daily curriculum resources that teachers interact with? Um, and, in, and in doing that in a way that's developmentally responsive um, to support staff. And then I think our third large initiative is to continue to move towards student identifiable data so we're expanding that this year and, and thinking around not only what data will we gather, but in what ways will we then support schools, school leaders and teachers to, to leverage the information that we're gathering so that we're making decisions that really do connect back to, to our mission, which is every student is thriving and learning every day that they're with us in school. Yeah, Angela, one of the things that uh, I, I'm thinking back on uh, something that uh, was uh, present or uh, discussed in the panel this morning, and uh, uh, particularly by Eric Gordon, who uh, looked at the using uh, the district's own resources uh, as models. And I know that um, you're not only identifying classrooms, but you're identifying whole schools that can be models for others. Do you want to just speak about that for a moment? Uh, sure. So at the classroom level, we definitely have the connections with our teachers that are working toward earning their responsive classroom certification. We also have spent the last two years with a team of SEL design fellows. So uh, those were teachers across 35 schools, kindergarten through 12th grade, to really define the knowledge, skills, and dispositions of social emotional learning in the classroom. And from that, we've built a specialization, which is our language in Virginia Beach for a micro credential. And that's getting ready to launch. So as teachers learn, we want to honor more than just sort of seat time and professional learning. It's that transfer of knowledge and skill back into practice in the classroom. So as teachers demonstrate capacity, that allows us to leverage their expertise to be able to promote exemplars. So that's sort of at the classroom level, uh, two approaches to making sure that we, um, you know, we can demonstrate what it, what it, what we mean when we say SEL is critical every day in the classroom. And then at the leader level this year, we're piloting uh, with three of our schools, two elementary and one middle school, working directly with the principal toward earning their practitioner certification and responsive classroom. So those principals will work um, in a year-long cycle with support, uh, both from Responsive Classroom and with us in our Office for Professional Growth, and thinking around how do you take those practices to scale. So that will involve professional learning at the school site, collaborating, uh, co-designing, co-delivering professional learning alongside those administrators, and then a 
strong focus on support staff. So thinking around our teacher assistants, paraprofessionals, behavior intervention specialists, bus drivers, how do we take the philosophy of that idea that students want, we all need as humans, uh, significance, belonging, and fun. How does that permeate across the the day-to-day -day life of the school? And our hope is yeah, our hope is that will be tremendously successful <laughs> and we'll be able to expand that leadership and that we'll learn some important lessons this year about how to how to move SEL from a classroom focus to a larger school-wide focus. Well, we hope you are too as well, because we have much to learn together. Um, uh, but I, I just wanted to uh, sort of call out some of what you were just talking about. Not only are you using your own, you know, your, your own leaders to leverage uh, the growing knowledge base within the district, but the uh, you're you're working at a level of depth to achieve fidelity and uh, consistency. Uh, and that uh, it takes a lot to move this work in that direction. And I know that those who are beginning, I hope that you know, this is not uh, obviously the, the first step in, in uh, district's effort, but it, in fact, uh, given the length of time that Virginia Beach has devoted to this and the depth of work that you've uh, pursued, uh, it is, uh, really quite outstanding that you're going this deep and you're continuing to you know, dig deeper and refine skills and look for consistency and fidelity. So I, I just wanna congratulate you on the work that you're doing. It's, it's really exceptional work. And thank, uh, you. thank you for your leadership and, and thank you for sharing uh, all that you have with the other districts who are participating. Well, we're grateful to be learning alongside other people. Thank you for that. Great, thanks, thanks. Angela. All right, uh, Amy Krupp is from Hazel Park. Um, let's uh, if we, uh, share a little bit about what, uh, what is your plan for the year and your targets for the year. Amy is just coming forward now, so we'll just have a moment. Oh, you're on. All right, good. Okay. Hi, Amy. Hi, how are you? Good, and welcome. Uh, so take us a little bit through uh, Hazel Park and, and what, your, uh, what your plans are and uh, your targets and, and your plans moving forward. Well, we have uh, been through a lot in the last several years. And so we've done a lot of work with MTSS and developing curriculum. And this is one of our goals in our strategic plan um, that you can see we've had the concept of SEL, naming it as a positive school climate, as we looked at uh, developing support for our students. And we placed this picture off to the side because we've been doing advisory Monday morning meetings, PBIS surveys for the students in the districts, trauma-informed, um, understanding by design curriculum, lots of surveys to our parents. But I think what we really needed to think about was how would we bring um, all of this together as um, a school district. And so as we're thinking about where we need to go in our SEL uh, outcomes is um, how um, can we transform um, all of this utilizing the CASEL framework. And so stepping back a little bit as a district, bringing all these initiatives that we um, so heartily put together in the last uh, six years and say, let's step back and make sure that our district really understands the CASEL framework and understands what transformative SEL is and really make this a part of the fabric um, of Hazel Park in our school district community um, so that it's not just another initiative, but along with uh, the equity work that we're doing that the everyone knows what SEL is. And so that 
our other outcome that we want to have is that um, all students have an equitable uh, education and that um, SEL be um, implemented obviously in a cohesive manner. We try to do things in a very systems lens here in Hazel Park um, and so that um, all of our buildings, uh, everyone's uh, working in the same lens in the same manner, though it may be different based upon their buildings, um, but we want everybody to kind of be doing it in the same manner. And that um, all students will be measured in the same way based by their individualism, um, that uh, we have a strong um, uh, eth ethnic background here. We also have low socioeconomic and that no matter where you come from or what you do, that all of our kids will be successful. So when we think about all of that, we're hoping that uh, we will be participating in this uh, SEL program and we also participating in a state initiative and that um, all of these things will come together in a cohesive manner next year to kind of guide us. So we'll slow down on our other initiatives and try to bring them all together. Um, help everybody to understand that CASEL framework um, with our various leadership teams and, and especially our Board of Education, really taking the time to bring them along because as we've learned in our school district, if our Board of Education isn't along with us, an, an initiative will not be successful. And uh, really understand um, how we can bring the SEL work together with our work with the Midwest Equity Center. So it's all one and it's not out in a silo. And uh, really think about um, our other student support systems that we have and make sure those SEL practices are in place and uh, then develop our multi-year action plan. And uh, we talked a little bit earlier in the groups uh, that I was in that I think we're really gonna have to step some people back. Um, they're wanting to move a little quicker. We were using some surveys and some other assessments and, um, and, and I think we might just need to tell people to slow down a little bit so that we can uh, reboot uh, things that we're doing in a manner to make sure that everybody's on board uh, together. And of course, we're dealing with uh, teacher concerns as well. Um, and so I think we need to stop and, and I've learned some really great things to think about for this upcoming year about our teachers as well. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Amy. The, uh, just a, a couple of questions. It, uh, I do think the, the theme of uh, going slow to go fast is, is a really powerful one. And, and you've articulated that in the, in the direction and also having some consistency of understanding because I know a number of the districts have uh, highlighted that as, as critically important so that people understand you know, whether you choose a castle framework or uh, is, uh, I think in Iowa, there's a state framework that's fairly consistent. And I think uh, Matt is moving in that direction and looking at, at that in his district. Uh, but having some consistent framework is really helpful so that it grounds the work. And I, I think this is a, it's a very thoughtful approach that you've, you've taken and uh, very much appreciate the, the directions you're taking. I'm just curious in terms of uh, the what emerged for you from the summit? What are some of the insights that that emerged that influenced the direction that you're taking? Well, I really enjoyed um, a lot of the information regarding uh, some of the multiple assessments and how to assess. Um, and I really enjoyed that part of the assessment where we were, uh, the summit where we sat and we really talked together in some of those smaller groups about what other groups were doing. Additionally, um, the time to sit together with other school districts to hear how they're handling um, their teachers. Um, and I'm, I'm in, I've already gone online to hear about um, some of the organizations that are being used to work with some of their teachers. So I think those were really some good takeaways and um, really enjoyed some of the Hanover discussions that we were able to have as well. Great, well, thank you, Amy, and good luck in, in your work. Um, this is, it's exciting and um, I hope you'll, you'll be part of the cohort and stay in touch with us as we, uh, as we continue. So the next up is uh, Christy Jacobs, and I want to say Christy has been part of the cohort for a number of years in Anderson School District in Montana. Um, it's actually quite a tiny school district, but Christy has been very uh, dedicated to the to SEL. So, uh, Christy, can you? Uh, oh, um, can you raise your hand, Christy? Uh, she may have not may not be here. Um, okay, well, we're going to move on then to uh, Suzanne Keller from uh, Rochester School District. So, uh, Suzanne. 
Hi. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Yep. We can hear you. Great. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm hoping you can see my screen okay. Well, good afternoon, I'm Suzanne Keller. I'm the Director of Educational Services for Rochester School District. Um, just so you know, Rochester District is located in Rochester, Illinois. Our district enrollment is a little over 2,200 students in grades pre-K pre through 12. And we've been very fortunate to be on an SEL journey for the past several years and have actually partnered with Castle and CEC for the past three of those. And with that, our district has been um, very dedicated um, to making sure that, you know, our efforts were part of the district strategic plan. And so we've just given you a snapshot here today of what that plan looks like. But the overarching goal is preparing students to be on track for K through 12 college career and life readiness in an environment of innovation that features high quality teaching and learning opportunities. And then underneath that, I won't read everything to you, but wanted to share the importance that our district has highlighted in making sure to provide job embedded professional learning opportunities for our staff. In addition to that, updating and aligning curriculum materials, instruction and assessment. Again, all of that is tied to SEL. And finally, connecting every child with a caring and committed adult. So incre increasing staff knowledge of best practices and strategies to meet the SEL needs of our students as well as identifying at-risk students and, and develop and implement systems of support for them. So that's truly been a focus for several years now. We have been very fortunate during the past two days with you all to have those district team discussions to identify, okay, what do our next steps need to look like? And it was very beneficial for us first to, of course, revisit our vision as a district as it pertains to SEL. And with that, our vision statement is that all members of the Rochester School District will develop and practice self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills and responsible decision making to reach our full potential as empowered individuals and a resilient community. When looking at our SEL targets and strategies, again, we are looking to define and implement a systematic approach to the SEL process. So for example, what are those expectations? Where are we expect, what are we expecting for our pre-K through 12th graders? In addition to that, it's key that we grow the administrative team's capacity in regards to SEL so they can do their leadership work with fidelity. So what does this look like as a leader? What are the expectations of our administrative team? What will that look like for their students and teachers in each of their individual buildings? And a key part of this, I know we've already shared our district strategic outline, but looking at the school improvement process and plans at each of the attendance centers. So it will be key that our administrators promote a safe culture in which the staff feel comfortable sharing their experiences and ideas as they relate to SEL, dedicating time during regular staff meetings for staff to share out tools, experiences, and of course have the opportunity to collaborate. In addition to that, communicating with staff different tools and monthly SEL tips that they can utilize and reiterating the SEL strategies and of course that common language that needs to be used across the district. And then finally with that growth goal, looking at identifying what support and professional development each of our administrators needs and in turn, what support do their staff members need. Finally, looking at our MTSS process, um, we will utilize Panorama student survey data to provide the support and intervention that students in grades three through 12 are needing. In addition to that, our students in kindergarten through second grade complete an SEL survey that was actually mirrored after Panorama, but was created by our building administration there. That survey is completed three times a year and that data will need to be analyzed by our administration, our teachers, social workers, and our guidance staff. In addition to that, we will work to uniform um, all of our data days conversations and processes across the district in order to make those data-driven decisions utilizing Panorama data. In addition to that, looking at the self-care education and resources that our staff have and developing and consistently utilizing that toolkit. It's something that all of us across the district need to make sure that we are constantly and consistently consistently utilizing. 
And really just in closing, we are all increasing our SEL tools. Our staff continues to grow their knowledge about SEL and has worked to identify practices that they are already using and working to, of course, implement those with fidelity. So we will continue to grow their toolkit there. In addition to that, I know we're all in the same boat as far as our students here at Rochester and across all of our districts continue to change and increase and our staff need the support resources and training to successfully support their students as well as themselves and take care of themselves. That's a key. Thank you for your time today. Suzanne, I mean, uh, this is quite a comprehensive plan. It's a very powerful plan. And um, obviously, you're not the only one who's part of the team to do this. So say more about how you actually, who are the people who are going to be in your district who will carry this forward? And, and how do you continue to provide leadership uh, throughout the year as, as you carry forward on the plan? You know what, I, we are really fortunate. So on our cohort here and our work the past two days, we have Jennifer Shaw, who's our director of special education for the district, Cassie Carey, who's the intermediate school principal, Sarah Luttrell is our director of library media and media services, and Kelsey Pembroke, who is one of our special education teachers at Rochester High School. They have been core district SEL team members since three years ago, almost four years ago now, that we started our journey and partnership with Castle and CEC. We also have an entire district SEL team that I anticipate will continue this work moving into this school year. Um, and of course, the support of our superintendents. And like I spoke to earlier, just our building administration. So we're very fortunate that we do have a very solid team moving forward and to continue this work. So the, the themes that uh, were talked about actually in the first panel this morning about having a diverse cross district, cross departmental team is something that you have focused on. And uh, it looks like you've uh, not only achieved that, but you have tremendous commitment and buy-in from that team. Thank you very much. I feel very lucky yeah. to get to work with all of them, so. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, Suzanne, thank you very much for sharing. You're so uh, welcome. And sharing all the, all the work that you're doing. Thank you. All right, Nick, you're welcome. Uh, next up is um, uh, Carrie Smith, who uh, from Elmwood Park in, in Illinois. Uh, again, Carrie has been with the cohort for a number of years and they've been working on social emotional learning for some time uh, as Assistant Superintendent for Student Services. And Carrie, welcome. And uh, we look forward to hearing you know, the, both what your targets are and, and the progress you're, you're setting in motion and, and also just a little bit about uh, how the summit has uh, influenced that direction. Okay, thanks for having me. Um, so again, Carrie Smith, I'm the Assistant Superintendent in Elmwood Park Unit School District in Illinois. And Carrie, let me interrupt you for one second. Yeah. Your, your, your volume is very low. Uh, so if you could speak up a little bit, I think it's, it's a little hard to hear you. Disconnected myself. Is that better? Oh, it's wonderful. That's okay. much better. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so again, Carrie Smith, I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Student Services in Elmwood Park Community Unit School District. Uh, we are a school district that borders the city of Chicago here in Illinois. And the first slide just gives you a little bit of context about our district. Uh, what I want to highlight on this first slide, though, is that our Board of Education adopted goals, uh, three-year goals that will start with this upcoming school year, and they will drive our work. And so one of those goals, which is what I'll be talking about, is the development of a SEL strategic plan. And what we're really focusing on, the targets are um, focusing on professional development for staff, as well as just beginning that SEL strategic plan. Um, so if you look at the next slide here, I've, what I've done is I've broken those goals into three years to try to make it a little bit more manageable for our district-wide SEL committee, as well as myself. And you'll see each year we have a kind of a, a focus that builds on the previous year. And so um, we are trying to hopefully complete our strategic plan or action plan in three years. Uh, and each year we want to make sure that we're providing professional development for our staff. So this first year, we're really looking at restorative practices. We um, 
we did a training on restorative practices for some of our staff about five years ago. And so we know we need to come back to that and make sure that more of our staff are trained. And so this is really kind of the, the goals broken down and, and what we're hoping to see. And so then on this last slide, we just have the resources. So whenever we're talking about planning and what we need to do, we need to really think about and consider the resources that we need in order to be successful. And so we'll need financial resources for professional development, at least for the first couple of years, uh, professional and skill development, as well as a structured plan on lining all initiatives. And I think a lot of the presenters who have talked before me have said that we wanna make sure that um, SPL is not an add-on, that we are aligning it to everything that we're doing. So whether that's MTSS, whether that's equity, whatever it is, we wanna make sure that everything is aligned and cohesive. Um, so the last thing is just, you asked about what the summit has, has meant. And I think, um, and somebody else said it earlier, it's just the opportunity to network with the other districts, see what other districts are doing. I, I really enjoyed the first session where there were um, districts talking about kind of where they were in those implementation stages and, and what they were working on in their districts. And so I've got a lot of notes, a lot of ideas. Um, I actually had my one of my secretaries bring me up some chart paper yesterday for brainstorming. So I've got a lot of things that I've got to kind of organize and, and get together so that we can continue to move forward with implementation of SEL in our district. Well, Carrie, that's wonderful. Um, and, and I'm glad that the uh, exchange has been so valuable. And that's that was the whole intent of the summit, as a matter of fact, is to uh, enable people to talk with each other, to see uh, what others are doing and, and to pick up ideas. Now, you're not doing this alone uh, in your district and talk a little bit about you know, the, the team you have working together to, to move this forward. So we have a district-wide SCL committee and so we are a unit district. And so members of the committee range from teachers to social workers to building administration. Um, I am fortunate to have this committee. Last summer, they worked throughout the summer uh, they volunteered their time because we really felt like, you know what, we were starting the year remote last year. And so we wanted to make sure that we put things in place so that when our staff came back, they could work with our students on social emotional learning skills. And, and so I, I feel fortunate to be guiding this committee. Um, what we will be doing this year is we're looking for additional committee members to really help out with this work that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like a major focus will be on professional development and a focus on, on teachers and alignment. So uh, again, a, the, a lot of consistency across the, uh, the work of, of many of these districts. And I, I wish you well in the coming year and look forward to us staying in touch and, and uh, checking in as, as you make progress. Thank you. So thank you, Carrie. And last but not least, we have Stacy Stout from uh, Wilson uh, School District in Pennsylvania. So, uh, Stacy, if you raise your hand, and we'll bring you up. Okay, I think. Can everyone see me at this? All right. Okay. Yes. We're all set. We can see you. Okay. Excellent. So. Um, because I am the the lone participant from from my district for this particular summit. Um, I've not formalized a whole lot of these goals yet. Um, all of the folks who've been able to share through their varied stages of development with this SEL work have given me tremendous ideas. And so I had jotted down uh, six goals over the last two days that I feel are appropriate goals to take back to the team um, to really be working through in, in the coming years. So as I mentioned, when we, when we first started discussions, um, our continuous school improvement process is what prompted our start to the SEL uh, exploration. And so um, some of that data, the perception data really led us to the fact that we needed to pursue looking at social and emotional learning. So we formed a task force and the task force has been looking at equity and, and other pieces of data related to uh, that topic. And, I kind of kind kind of go in reverse order. Something that I took from the summit over these last two days is that the work that we were doing in equity really was SEL work, and the SEL work really was equity. Um, so they were very much and still continue to be married together. So we're going to utilize that task force, I believe, 
um, to include the group of SEL champions that we've already established. So this task force is made up of all stakeholders uh, across the district. We have board members, we have uh, professional staff members, we have students, we have community, and now we want to include those professional staff members that are what we call SEL champions from each of our schools uh, to be part of this task force. And so here's my brainstorm of, of these six ideas uh, of where we need to extend our work beyond just the education that we've had and our own professional learning on what SEL is over the last year and a half. So um, we went almost in, in, again, reverse order. We don't have a vision statement yet because we were just learning about what is this and what does it mean for our school district. So uh, goal number one would be to develop that vision statement as a task force and then an implementation plan that's extended a little bit more long-term, maybe three years, five years, whatever the, the, the team feels uh, makes sense as we work on the planning. Uh, at the same time, we will continue our district and building professional learning with our professional staff and our leaders on social emotional learning and be thinking about ways we can look for integration across the process. Uh, because again, one of the main takeaways I continue to hear, I think I knew it all along but and, and believed it all along, but I heard it over and over and over again, SEL is not a thing, it's not a program, it's really a, a way of of believing a way of um, creating a culture and an ecosystem uh, within your organization. So uh, that will be an important part of what we do. Uh, goal number three, to take that education outside of the walls of our district and invest in educating the stakeholders around us to include our board of directors and include our community members. And that can be done through some of our publications that we already have in place. We have. Um, uh, what we call the, the blitz, where everyone receives information in the community and people look to uh, that for finding out what's happening in our district. Um, number four, I wrote down about uh, the importance of examining system-wide procedures and policies. And that's part of that whole ecosystem that was mentioned that I believe Jorge was talking about earlier uh, today. Goal number five, um, continuing to strategize around the adult SEL process. I, I took away some excellent ideas about how to support adult SEL. We have some things in place. We have a wellness committee. Uh, we were looking at uh, the importance of those I competencies for each of the individuals uh, working in our organization, uh, but we wanna continue that work as well. And then last but not least, just continue this feedback loop with all of our stakeholders, our staff, our students, the leaders and our community to collect data that will inform our implementation processes and that we can tweak and really utilize to, to hone and get better at what we're doing across, uh, across the plan. So that's what we're thinking, what I'm thinking at this time that I'm taking to my team. Well, Stacy, that's great, um, and you've you've actually really launched in in a bold way. Uh, but I think it's a it's a good plan to begin uh, cultivating the support of uh, all the stakeholders. I think that that's a I think that's one thing that that has stood out in some of the feedback, uh, both from the presenters and from the sharing that uh, districts have done, and that including uh, multiple stakeholders, uh, both within the district, outside the district, and building that kind of support and communication really strengthens a program over the long term. Uh, so uh, I hope that you'll stay in touch with the uh, cohort. Uh, uh, as you've, you've seen, uh, there's a lot to be gained in the sharing of resources and the sharing of, of plans. Um, the lessons that we learn as we do this work are really important to exchange with each other. Uh, it's how we grow and it's how we uh, learn and, and how we can uh, strengthen the efforts in each of our districts. So Stacy, thank you very much for sharing that and, and I, I wish you well in, in taking this to your team and, and seeing how they further refine the, the uh, six goals that you've set. So well, thank, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to, to join the summit and be part of the process. Uh, really exciting 
and and I, it reminded me that uh, someone once said, if you're the smartest person in the room, you should get out of the room. Well, believe me, I've been in the room all day yesterday and today. So um, clearly I have much to learn as well. Well, thank you. And thank you for your enthusiasm and energy. You know, just let me bring a, a close to, to this portion. Um, as I said, I have a deep belief that it is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I just got a message that Christy Jacobs is here uh, and I don't want to exclude her. As I said, Christy has been part of the cohort for quite a while, uh, up from Anderson, uh, Montana. And uh, Christy, let's uh, bring you up and, and have you share a little bit about, you know, what are your targets and, and your directions? Absolutely. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it on. We were actually been doing some district work. I had some teachers in a room and needed to take advantage. So I apologize um, for my late joining. But um, we are um, at a situation in Anderson that's kind of unique. We are doing a lot of the SEL pieces and we're trying to put it together. Um, so we've been doing our, our curriculum. We do Sabres and My Sabres. And now we're trying to get it more into a movement. Um, I would say, so our targets and you're trying to braid it into our um, MTSS um, assessments. We're also trying to figure out how to use our sabers um, and my sabers. And we've done um, the my voice in the past and use all of those surveys um, in a way that is um, useful and practical and gives us the information to move on um, and to take that. Um, I really was struck by what they said earlier today about, you know, taking the what's the purpose of the assessment, what's the goal and making it all line up because we're doing pieces but we don't have that linear based around the vision, the goal um, and the targets we want to achieve. So that's kind of where we're headed for this year. We're also, um, we were just in the process of developing new t-shirts with our vision on it for the start of the school year with our, you know, so getting into the, which our teachers works, so my staff was excited about, as I said, I'm a K-8 school district so, and I'm a superintendent and a principal. Um, and so using it kind of as our theme working on um, also, Montana um, has adopted or is in the process of adopting SEL competencies. So the professional development piece is going to be coming from the state with that. Um, they're based upon the castle. I was able to give some feedback on those. Um, and so that will be coming out as well, which, which should um, interwove nicely um, with our other um, goals for the year. Great. And uh, it, it sounds like, again, you're, uh, you're carrying it forward and building a broader base. Um, what's, you know, as you've been participating these last two days, what's one thing that stood out in terms of uh, an influence on the, the directions that you're going to take? Um, I think that having my teachers have a national perspective and what's being done on a national, when you're in Montana and we, we're a place where people come, they stay, or, you know, I'm Montana State, they're born in Bozeman, they go to Montana State, they don't have that. So listening what's being done, they were all fascinated by in the communities of listening where we are, what other people are doing, hearing what large urban school districts was kind of this, whoa, for a lot of my staff. Um, so I think that that piece, um, understanding how this is a movement across the country um, has helped move us forward and getting an excitement going. We also are working with our middle schoolers. Um, I think that's the other piece is that um, that as we listen to this and listen to that engagement piece, I was struck earlier today about talking about that student engagement um, that the, um, I'm sorry, I forgot his name, the Cleveland Public Schools um, superintendent was discussing, Eric Gordon was talking about that, um, how he gets those kids engaged. And so upping our engagement, especially, we have kids who are eighth grade, there's 25 only in that class and they've been here since kindergarten. How do we get that student engagement piece to get them to buy in to help with that culture piece? So that really struck out to all of us as well. That's great. Well, thank you, Christy, and, and good luck with your efforts. And we look forward to your continued participation in the cohort. This is- uh, and Yeah, I'm really excited that, that this is a big deal for my district to let me do this because uh, being a small district, the funds are hard to come by and we didn't get a lot on the ESSER money. So I'm really, really um, proud of my board for giving me this and our teachers are really excited for it too, so. Great, well, thank you. And thanks for, for jumping back in. So let me uh, try to bring at least this this piece to closure, and I'm going to pass it on to Dawn in a couple of minutes to talk a little bit about what the year uh, looks like ahead for the cohort. Um, but you know, one of my firm beliefs is that learning together is so critically important. That uh, the exchange that we have, the the dialogue among districts, the lessons learned that can be exchanged, um, uh, really helps all of us move forward. And uh, we designed this 
uh, summit and we designed the cohort uh, to reflect that concept uh, that we're better together and that we're better sharing and thinking together and working together and, and exchanging ideas and, and exchanging resources. Um, you know, districts like Virginia Beach and Naperville and, and uh, Marshalltown and others have been doing some of the work for a, an extended period of time, Collier County, um, have lots to share with others uh, and can, uh, the, the resources that they can put forward and that, that can be helpful. And uh, at the same time, uh, the experiences of uh, some of our smaller districts are really instructive in terms of how we personalize and how we reach a broad range of stakeholders. And so there's much that we gain from the exchange. So I hope that uh, throughout the summit, not only have the panels and, and Linda Darling Hammond's uh, sort of broad perspective and vision of the work been helpful, uh, but that uh, the insights that you've gained and, and the, the you can bring back to your district, but at the same time uh, that you have a desire to come back and, and uh, continue that conversation with other districts so that we uh, share the wisdom that you're gaining and the experiences that you've had and, and uh, hear about even the pitfalls and, and the issues that emerge so uh, we can learn from those as well. Um, I want to thank you in particular for participating in the summit. Uh, I've learned a lot, both from the presenters and, and from the, uh, the ideas that have been exchanged in the communities of practice sessions and, and in your sharing of the, the goals that, and directions you're taking. Uh, I want to uh, wish everybody a, a great year ahead uh, and thank you for your commitment to social emotional learning. I can't imagine at this time, a more important uh, initiative, uh, given the experiences that we've had with the pandemic, but also uh, some of the issues of equity, because I do believe, and I, I know there's the article in the, uh, in the Padlet, uh, that, that uh, social emotional learning is one of the paths to equity. It's a critical path, and that the alignment between equity and SEL is a close one. Uh, so uh, let me just say in, in closing that the, the videos will probably be available next week. You'll be able to, uh, and probably as a Monday, uh, we're gonna work on or, or early next week, we'll try to post these on the AASA website so that if you'd like to share one or others of the videos or all of them, that you can share them with your team. The Padlet will remain open and uh, you can share that with your team as well. And if they find resources or links that are of value, please uh, feel free to download the resources. Uh, they're all free. They've all been given to us by the, the uh, presenters. And uh, you, you can see that there's a wealth of resources there uh, that may be helpful for your uh, projects and the development of your projects. So uh, I wanna wish you well, and I'm gonna uh, move this to Dawn uh, to talk a little bit about next year and the, and the plans for the cohort, uh, Dawn. Great, thank you. Um, I have to say once again, um, it was a, a, an exciting two days and a lot was absolutely learned um, by all. And you know, when we sat and talked about doing a summit, we very much wanted to do something very relevant, which it absolutely is. And thinking about how this could be something that's standalone, but yet possibly also a launching pad to the next steps. And I think that we also were able to to accomplish that as well. And so when we think about, you know, next year, um, I in the chat box, you should have a, um, a link to our syllabus that we've spent a lot of time really wanting to think about what is important to you? What are those next steps as you dive deeper this next school year? Um, and so if you take some time to kind of peruse through it, you'll see obviously one of the themes that emerged over this um, these last two days was around um, SCL for adults. So, uh, you know, come the fall, those are two things, whether it's through high school students um, and or staff, as well as our community and whether our adults. So we will be tackling that in the fall. You will also notice when um, you're looking at this document that we want to do um, group learning and hear from the experts, but then also come to that community of practice. And it seemed like um, from today and yesterday that um, very much people um, enjoyed the opportunity of 
diving into a uh, topic very deeply, but then also thinking about how does that work in our district? What would make most sense for us? So we also have those woven into that. We will focus um, come the winter time around equity and culturally responsive practices, which will lead us right into um, the NCE conference in Nashville, which I'm sure um, Mort, when he gets on, will kind of uh, talk a few things about that with us, but we will have the opportunity in February to come together in person um, as a cohort and be able to um, dive even deeper into um, those topics. Um, again, we want to also come, you know, March, dive into progress monitoring, service learning. Again, in the spring, how do you bring it all together? I know um, Shelly shared, we do wanna do a site visit where we can actually go in person um, to a district and visibly see um, the great things that are going on and how does it look and feel um, you know, when, when great systemic SEL is taking place. So we hope that you take a minute to go ahead and look um, at that syllabus and see if that's of interest to you. If you have not registered for a cohort, there still is that opportunity. There should also be a link in the chat to be able to do that as well. Um, and so we look forward, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email or direct message me. Um, but again, thank you. And with that, um, oh, before I move on to Mort, I'm going to say one thing. I really would love for um, Eliza and Seth to show their faces because this um, was the work that you, we know the devil is in the detail and it was super successful because of all of the work that they did and sending you all those emails and making sure that you were going from one meeting to the next um, flawlessly. So I do want to thank, uh, make sure we take an opportunity to thank them. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Mort. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Eliza. Um, I, so much has been said today, which is wonderful. I don't want to go through and, and go through all the details. You know, um, what I'd like to do is end with a poem. Uh, I was an English teacher at the high school level just for a short period of time, for six years before I uh, had the good fortune to move on to administration. And in my um, years of being an, uh, an English teacher, I came across this poem that I want to share with you because I think it captures what you were saying today. Um, host is disabled participant screen sharing. Seth, you've got to give me the screen. Can you give me the screen, Seth? And and as he, uh, all set, thank you, Seth. As I do that, I want to share with you a couple of thoughts. As I was taking like extensive notes, I'm going to send out thank you notes to everybody who reported that, but um, I, I want to repeat some themes that I heard before I go to the poem. Um, this is heuristic, which is you continue to ask questions as you go uh, through this. It's not a program. It's not a product. Um, it's about learning how to work together. Uh, this, this work uh, truly captures who we are at ASA, which is where we learn and we grow and we take action together. And what I heard, Charlie and Dawn, is about taking action. It's just not sitting back, even if we don't have all the answers. So here, if I can figure out how to do it, um, is the poem. And um, by the way, I put sunrise back on my screen. It's one of my favorite pictures because I think as we look towards this year, uh, it's a new day. Um, and it is about sunrise. It is about every day we take advantages. I just want to give you um, a couple of lines. It's called The Modern Poetry by Wallace Stevens. And if I had to put SEL in here in a number of places, you could do the same. But, but think just for a moment about what you said, which is why I thought of this poem. Um, the poem of the mind in the act of finding what will suffice. It is not always had to find. The scene was set, it repeated was in the script. Then the theater was changed to something else. Its past was souvenir. It had to be living to learn the speech of the place. And then to the end, it must be the finding of a satisfaction. It may be of a man skating, a woman dancing, a woman combing, the poem of the act of the mind. I think that's what you're all about. You are collectively the poem of the mind in trying to find what will suffice for the children of America. And on behalf of those 50 million children that we serve at ASA, I want to thank you for being part of this discussion, part of this learning together, and most importantly, taking action 
on their behalf. We wish all of you well. Those of you who are ready to start school year in a couple of days or in a couple of weeks, we wish you a smooth opening. Most importantly, individually, we wish each of you peace and good health um, and joy in the work that you do. Be well. Well, Mort, let me uh, <clears throat> let me try to bring uh, this back to some closure. Uh, and thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, also acknowledge uh, Eliza and Seth uh, and Dawn um, and uh, uh, Janet, who's contributed. But uh, Eliza and Seth have been just extraordinary in this effort and, and my appreciation for making this work. But I do want to say something about AASA, too. And that is uh, AASA has a strong commitment and uh, that commitment is to uh, the, the growth uh, of our profession and the growth of us as professionals. And uh, I just wanna thank Mort for living that and uh, bringing the cohorts together and having the idea around the cohorts so that people can coalesce around issues that are important to them and work together. And that's something that you uh, you brought to your superintendency and you've brought that to your work at AASA. And I just wanna extend an appreciation to you and to all those at AASA for continuing to be a champion of uh, that kind of exchange and dialogue among people and the, the heartfelt need to connect and to connect not only with children, but with each other. So thank you for your work. And let me thank everybody for joining us. Uh, and with that, we're gonna bring a close to the summit a little bit early, but I hope that you have a, uh, a good summer as well. So thank you. <laughs>